All right. Hello, class. Welcome back to part C of this lecture, where we get to the real meat. Um, hopefully, I've prepared you in uh, part B uh, with some discussion of rotation matrices for what we're about to do. Uh, so specifically, we are going to go from position and velocity vectors in satellite normal or perifocal coordinate system to ECI coordinates. Right. Several rotations have to take place uh, before we get there, however. So uh, just a rehash of what a perifocal and satellite normal coordinate systems are. Uh, so in particular, the perifocal coordinate system is the coordinate system where the x hat vector is aligned with the eccentricity vector, so that uh, we have x hat pointing towards periapse. Uh, the z at, the z vector is pointed out of the orbital plane, so aligned with the angular momentum vector. This is aligned with the eccentricity vector. And the uh, y hat vector is just given by the right hand rule. x, z, so y is pointing up. Not aligned with anything in particular. So, y, and, then, and then of course the satellite normal coordinate system, where the uh, x hat vector is in the, uh, in the position vector direction. And the uh, z hat vector is also angular momentum uh, and the y is defined by the right-hand rule somewhere over there. Right. So first, we'll talk about uh, position vector, because that's by far the easiest. So in particular, we have the position vector in the satellite normal coordinates, uh, which are these ones right here. Uh, and that's, of course, right, just r, the radius, 0, 0. Right? Because by definition, the radius, uh, radial vector is uh, aligned with the x-axis. Now, a very simple rotation will give us the uh, position vector in the perifocal coordinate system. But it's worth uh, uh, just uh, getting, getting warmed up to do that rotation as opposed to just giving the formula here. So remember, of course, that uh, the radius magnitude is just given by the, uh, uh, the, uh, the polar equation. So don't even need to highlight that. So we've got our, our uh, position in the satellite normal and we want it in the perifocal, PQW frame. So what is that? Well, uh, now remember what I told you, that the uh, rotation that we apply to the position in satellite normal is a uh, is the negative of the angle uh, that we use to get from the satellite normal to the perifocal frame. So in particular, if this is the perifocal frame, right, the PQW, uh, this is the perifocal frame and this is the satellite normal, to get from satellite normal frame, F1, to PQW, F2, requires a negative rotation uh, about the z-axis, the z-axis, uh, sorry, the y is, is not the z-axis, uh, by the true anomaly. So a negative, to get from f1 to f2 requires a negative rotation. Now, to express, that's f1, f2, to express a vector in f1, uh, in F2 gives us a rotation matrix, again, about the Z axis, so it's a third rotation, principal axis rotation, uh, by the angle theta, which were a negative of the angle theta, which relates those two frames. In this case, however, theta is negative F, and so those two negative signs cancel out, and so we can just substitute directly in here for a positive F. Right. So now if we uh, apply that uh, third rotation matrices, which I've cut and pasted from the uh, previous slide, uh, we get R in PQW, right, that's not a P, that's an R, PQW 
equals uh, this rotation matrix cosine f negative sine f zero zero one zero zero sine f cosine f right times r zero zero so we do that uh, multiplication and of course right that gives us r cosine f first row uh, then r sine f second row and then uh, zero in the third row right and so that's our position vector in the perifocal coordinates uh, r cosine f r sine f of course we could have just like um, used trigonometry to get that is fairly obvious in this case but it's uh, worth going through the, uh, the the steps here just for fun or just gets warmed up okay. let me uh, go on to the next slide now uh, so yes as I was saying the velocity vector however is a, a bit of a different beast however um, in particular the it's hard to directly uh, express the set, the velocity vector in the PQW frame and so we're going to first express it in the satellite normal frame uh, and so in particular your SN if you remember now from lecture two I think um, yes I think it was lecture two uh, the uh, velocity vector, right, has two components, one aligned with the radial vector, which is r dot. So that's uh, in the x hat satellite normal frame. This is f1 satellite normal. And uh, the y vector, right, is, uh, so y is pointing this way. Uh, that the component of y is r f dot, right? So uh, f, of course, being the true anomaly, the rate of change of true anomaly. So uh, we can uh, we can express this <clears throat> in terms of r dot and f dot. Of course, we're not going to be we're going to have to get rid of r dot and f dot in a minute, but that's a second. Uh, so we can express as we did position uh, the velocity vector in the PQW by a rotation matrix R3, principal rotation about the z-axis, uh, by angle uh, F. Now remember there are two negatives which canceled out there and so this is a positive rotation here about F, even though the frame is going the opposite direction. So we just uh, now apply uh, the rotation matrices. Let's see, bring them back there in my cut and paste. Again, right here we're concentrating on R3 and so we multiply uh, this uh, this matrix out um, so cosine uh, R dot uh, minus sine R F dot there and uh, R sine R dot sine and then um, we get a, a cosine F right there so we have this is the uh, velocity vector in the PQW frame. <clears throat> now this, uh, we're not, we can't do much with this right now because, right, we have all these R dots and F dots. And so you may ask, like, uh, what are, what is this in terms of A, E, and F, right? We've got F, but we also have R dot and F dot. And so we have to take a, a brief moment to try and uh, figure out what those things are. So uh, <clears throat> these are the answers, right? So in particular, R F dot uh, is this, and R dot is this. Now, how did we get that? Uh, so basically, we combined the polar equation with the expression for angular momentum, which we derived in, again, lecture two, I think. Uh, so in particular, the angular momentum is R squared F dot. So how do we get from uh, r squared f dot equals a constant, which is angular momentum, to uh, our expression for r f dot here. So I actually have these derivations on the uh, on the notes, and so I might as well go through them. Uh, you can skip them if you prefer, but I think that they're sort of interesting. Uh, so r f dot, well, uh, where do we get r f dot? Well, we get that from dividing the angular momentum expression, conservation of angular momentum, by r. 
So if we divide both sides by r, this r cancels that. And we get an expression for rf dot equals h over r. Right, that's that. Now we uh, substitute in for the polar equation into r. And we get h over p 1 plus cosine f. So uh, we focus on the h over p. So our expression for h is, of course, uh, square root of mu p. Uh, that's because p equals h squared over mu. And we get uh, this expression here. And so we have a square root of p on the top and a p on the bottom. And so this becomes a square root of p on the bottom. And so we get now this nice expression here for r f dot. Uh, now for r dot, uh, we combine, again, uh, this expression for conservation of angular momentum. Uh, so r dot, right, well, how do we get that? We use the chain rule um, as applied to uh, the polar equation, d dt. Uh, so that whole thing, right? And so that gives us r dot on the left. And on the right, well, the only thing that varies with time is f. And so we just use the, uh, the chain rule here. Uh, so that exponent on the denominator goes to 2. There's a negative sign here. But then we, uh, we differentiate a cosine to get another negative sign. So actually, that's, there's a, no negative sign there. Uh, and the, so that derivative of so, cosine is negative sign. Uh, the e stays in there. And uh, then final application of the chain rule, f dot appears on the, on the end. So now we, uh, we look at this expression and we uh, substitute again in for the polar equation. So we multiply top and bottom by p and then plug in for the polar equation here again. And we get uh, r dot equals r squared e over p sine f f dot. And so now uh, we apply right the uh, expression for angular momentum here, r squared f dot into here. And this term and this term disappear and become h. And so we just get uh, h e over p times sine f. And of course, we uh, simplify h over p as we did over here, right, to get mu over p for h over p. And so now we have an expression for r dot, and we have an expression for r f dot, right, two ex important expressions there. So that gives us the, uh, the expressions here. And now we plug them into our formula for velocity. Right? So this is a satellite normal, and this is PQW. And uh, we, we plug in here, uh, let's see, this goes there and there, and this expression goes there and there. And obviously we simplify it somehow to get a cleaner expression, uh, which doesn't have lots of cosines and sines. And uh, I guess I also have notes on how that is done, right? So we plug in here and here. And once we plug in, right, we get this mu e uh, sine f cosine f. And on the right-hand side, we get uh, this expression sine f plus e cosine f sine f. So this term cancels that term. And then on the bottom, we get uh, the, the uh, the uh, uh, sine squareds right term here. And on the right, we get a cosine squared term there. Now these two co terms combine to sine squared plus cosine squared is one. And so we just get the uh, that one comes in here. So these two terms combine to get this term. And what we're left over with is this expression right here. So we've got uh, now a simplification. Those two terms canceled. These two terms become one. And so we have our nice clean expression for uh, the uh, uh, that we had on the previous slide for the velocity in the PQW reference frame. Yeah. So now we have a velocity vector in the PQW reference frame, uh, which of course, remember, is the one defined here in the orbital plane. It's a 2D reference frame, essentially. Um, Now uh, our goal is to take that velocity vector in the PQW reference frame and rotate it into ECI coordinates. Now this is where those rotation matrices become really uh, problematic. Well, not problematic, but uh, require uh, sort of careful thought and explanation. So we've got this uh, position and velocity vectors, two velocity vectors, 
expressed in PQW, and we want to express them in ECI. Now this is a little bit backwards because of how we defined these, uh, these orbital elements. So if you recall from lecture six, right, we took the orbital plane and we initially aligned it uh, with the equatorial plane so that the eccentricity vector uh, is aligned with uh, the x hat vector, the angular momentum vector up is aligned with the z hat vector, um, and then we rotated that, uh, that plane up so that now the eccentricity vector is pointing towards uh, this direction right here. So there are three rotations, right? Uh, first, uh, well, we, we've reordered them slightly. Uh, first, the uh, right ascension, then the inclination, and finally, the uh, argument of periaps. So let's stop a second, right, and think about what we're doing here. So in this explanation, right, this sequence of rotations, right, what we've got is basically a uh, vector in ECI coordinates. So we have this initial coordinate system, right? And uh, we have a vector, say a position vector in ECI coordinates. And we're changing our frame three times. So we've got ECI, a vector in ECI. And first we're, let's call that frame one. Frame one is ECI. And then we take that ECI frame and we rotate it so that uh, about the z-axis so that in this new frame, F2, the x-hat coordinate is aligned with the line of nodes. Right. That's F2. So that's a rotation of the original ECI frame uh, to about the z-axis so that these the x hat vector is pointing towards the line of nodes. Next, that's F2. Next, we rotate the frame so that the, uh, about the x hat vector, so that the uh, z hat axis is no longer aligned with the angular, with the, the z hat axis in the ECI coordinates. So in this case, now we've rotated that vector here down a little bit to get uh, F3. So that's uh, rotation by inclination. It's again, right hand rule, positive rotation about the X hat vector. So uh, the F2, uh, well actually that, now we're at F3. So F2 is this intermediate um, uh, rot uh, coordinate system. F3, we get from a rotation about inclination. And then we have a final coordinate system, right? Uh, which is a rotation about now the instantaneous Z axis in the F3 frame. Uh, so actually I should say this is a uh, rotation about the Z. This is a rotation about the X. And from uh, frame three to get to frame four, we have a rotation around the Z axis by the argument of periaps, right? So this angle here, right? So to get from ECI, right? First, we have a rotation of that frame to get to frame uh, two. And then we have by the, uh, argue, by the uh, uh, right ascension. And then we have a rotation about F of F2 to get to F3 by the inclination about the x-axis. And then we have a rotation of F3 about the z-axis, instantaneous axis in Z and F3, by the argument of periaps. And once we've done all, we've rotated, made those three rotations of our ECI coordinate system, that is the perifocal coordinate system, because that's E hat, right? and angular momentum is there, right? So basically what we've said is that uh, given a vector in ECI coordinates to obtain, uh, we rotate that vector because the vector doesn't change, right? Uh, 
first by negative of the um, uh, right ascension, because of course, uh, when we're changing coordinate systems, the angle is negative, right? The, the vector doesn't change, the coordinate system changes, so we have a negative angle here. And again, we're rotating the coordinate system, so it's a negative inclination. And again, we're rotating the coordinate system, uh, so it's a negative of the uh, argument of periaps. Right. So this gives us a way of converting a vector in ECI coordinates to a vector in perifocal coordinate system. Now, of course, that's the opposite of what we're trying to do. So what we're trying to do is find an ECI vector right, uh, by rotating a vector in perifocal coordinates of the system. Right? So what we found is the rotation matrix which rotates uh, ECI to perifocal, and which is actually the opposite of what we want, which is a rotation matrix which uh, uh, rotates PQW perifocal to ECI. So that's so we have to reverse this order of rotations, right? So just a summary here. Uh, wrote to rotate ECI, we first rotate the z-axis by uh, right ascension. Then we rotate the that aligns x-axis with line of nodes. Rotate uh, x-axis uh, about the x-axis by inclination, and uh, so the plane is now correct. But the eccentricity vector is now pointing at the line of nodes, and so we rotate about the z-axis, instantaneous z-axis by angle uh, omega, to place the eccentricity vector where it's supposed to be in the perifocal frame. So this, uh, the sequence of rotations is right ascension, inclination, and uh, argument to periaps. Right. So now uh, what we've got, of course, is uh, this uh, rotation uh, from PQW equals right, uh, R of... Right? Uh, ECI, negative, negative, negative. Oops, I left myself too much space here. And what we want is uh, the opposite. We want to express ECI in terms of perifocal. So what do we do? Well, fortunately, rotation matrices are invertible, uh, easily invertible, in fact. Right? So in particular, uh, if you have a rotation matrix, let's say theta, right? the inverse of the rotation matrix is equal to the either transpose of the rotation matrix or equivalently the r of the negative of the angle. Okay. So let's just invert this equation three times. First we'll invert uh, our three negative one of omega, negative omega. Then we'll invert our one of negative i. And then we'll invert our three of negative um, big omega. Right. And of course, uh, this first inverse, right, is just uh, now we're going to use this formula. And so we just uh, put the negative of a negative. And so this is uh, R3 of omega. This one is R1 of i. And this one is R3 of big omega. Right? And so uh, what we get is, right, this right-hand side becomes R3 of omega, R1 of i, and R3 of big omega. And these, this inverse cancels out all of these rotation matrices. And so those all just go to identity. And so on the right-hand side, we just get identity times R E C I. And so we've reversed our order of uh, angles uh, to find a position vector in E C I using our position vector and perifocal coordinates. And this uh, product of rotation matrices is this 
right? Uh, rotation matrix overall from a vector in PQW to a vector in ECI. So now we apply that to uh, uh, just figure out what that uh, rotation matrix is. It's just the product here, right? This is R3 of omega. This is R1 of i. And this is R3 of little omega. And so we can just calculate what the overall rotation matrix is. It's rather complicated, but it's, we can find it. Uh, it's this big formula here. That's our rotation matrix. And so now we're just going to take that formula we found for R and V in P perifocal coordinates and multiply it by our rotation matrix. And that's what we do. We take that big rotation matrix, and here actually I can just cut and paste it. And let's make it slightly smaller, so it just uh, doesn't dominate the slide. Where should I put it? I'll put it right here. Nope. Off the board. Okay. So now we take those uh, those vectors in perifocal coordinates. P, Q, W, P, Q, W. And we multiply by this uh, rotation matrix here. Uh, so this uh, term multiplied by this velocity vector, which we derived, is equal to this big, nasty set of formulas we have right here. And the uh, rotation matrix applied to the somewhat simpler uh, position vector is just this also rather large and nasty formula right here. Uh, we did make some simplifications. For example, uh, we combined the, uh, the the double angle formulas here to get some uh, slight simplifications of the formula um, in both expressions. So, if you do a rotation twice, right, it's uh, you get to add the angles together. So that makes life a little bit simpler. In any case, we now have a formula for the uh, position and velocity vectors in ECI coordinate systems, given our uh, orbital elements i, omega, big omega, a, e, and of course, f. So uh, now we can just uh, apply these formula to, uh, uh, to get our final conversion in the last step of this uh, first part of the course to convert our future time, t2, to position and velocity. Just an illustration of this process, um, right? So uh, assume that like you've uh, propagated your orbit and you found your true anomaly at t2, right? Uh, now convert that those orbital elements back to position and velocity vectors, right? So how do you do that? Well, first you find the uh, uh, the uh, uh, parameter, the semilattice rectum. Uh, calculate your uh, magnitude here just by plugging things in. Here we're using canonical units, Earth radii, and Earth radii per time unit for velocity. <clears throat> And uh, we fi first find the position and velocity vectors in perifocal coordinates, right? Uh, so that was from the previous slide. Uh, where did I put that? Yep, these, these two formula right here. We just apply these two formula, plugging in for F and R and P and F. And we get these expressions. Um, next, we apply, oh, sorry, that's not those, I skipped too many slides, uh, these expressions. Now we apply the rotation matrices, so we get the rotation about uh, the uh, argument of periaps, the rotation of one rotation about inclination, and a, a rotation about a big omega, or right ascension of ascending node, uh, three, one, three rotations, and then we apply them in the correct order, uh, that, that, and that. 
and we obtain the position and velocity vectors uh, in the ECI coordinate systems. And of course, we could have just uh, simply applied the formula, but the formula are fairly long, so this breaks it down a little bit more simply. So that uh, concludes part C of this lecture. We now have completed the process going from position and velocity at some initial time to uh, orbital elements to a mean anomaly, calculating delta t, uh, new mean anomaly, t2, going back, finding our new uh, true anomaly. Uh, the other orbital elements are frozen. And finally, going back to position and velocity at time two. In the next part of this lecture, we'll just uh, conclude everything by uh, translating those position and velocity vectors to pointing angles. Uh, so if you're like in space and you want to know where that position and velocity vector, because they're in ECI coordinates, that doesn't help you a lot, which where are they in space? Uh, that's where we're going to cover in the final part of this lecture. So I'll stop now and come back when we're ready for that.